everybody. Here we are once again, time to share some encouraging words together. I believe that every time we come to the Word of God, as we open our hearts to the Lord, as we purpose to put our faith in Him and to follow through on the instructions of His Word, we can always find in Him a sense of security and hope. Hard times may come, but they don't come to stay. The Lord brings us through and He promises to be with us every step of the way. And in Him, there's always hope. Today is a day to be encouraged in the Lord. I want to share with you for just a few moments um, a little devotional that I had opportunity this week to share with our governing board of directors. Here at Friendship Village, we have um, our board of directors that oversees us here at Friendship Village Chesterfield. There's a similar board that oversees our sister community at uh, Friendship Village Sunset Hills. But then there's the Friendship Village Parent Company and the, the, the Services Board that oversees everything all together, including our Friendship Village at Home Services. And uh, every few years, they meet together for what they call their Strategic Planning Retreat, not only considering where we've been, uh, what we've been through and how far we've come, but what the future may yet hold. It gives them a chance to dream, to plan, as uh, they follow the will of God for our organization. And um, I don't sit on that board. I sit uh, as, a, as a listening ear on the Chesterfield board. But occasionally, I'm invited to come and share with uh, the big board, the, the FV Services board. And uh, yesterday, as they began their strategic planning retreat, I was invited to come and share for just a few moments. And so I want to share with you the scripture and a bit of the story that I shared with them. This is a little bit more condensed, but, but hopefully we'll get the point here together. The Apostle Paul, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, he says this, Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Of course, his point is that every day brings its own challenges. There is the way of this world, the pattern of this world, and it is contrary to the ways of Christ. And we feel its influence and see its effects all the time. There are challenges to overcome. And yet, we don't face those challenges alone. We face them in the power and might of the Lord Jesus as we put our hope and our faith in him. And so just as the Apostle Paul encouraged the church in Ephesus, He's providing encouragement to you and I as we follow Christ as well, to live wisely and to make the most of the opportunities that he brings um, each and every day to show forth his goodness, his love, his mercy, his kindness, the kingdom of God, to make the presence of God known, that regardless of the difficulties, hardships, and evil of the day, people would know there's always hope in him. We're meant to live life on purpose with a sense of mission that guides us. Of course, the Bible tells us that we're all created with this primary objective, this primary purpose. It's true for you and me, regardless of our history, our vocation, um, our nationality. Um, we have, as followers of Christ, this same mission and goal, the same heart, the same agenda. And that is this, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Those two things go together. We can't love God without loving people. And we can't truly love people without loving God first. Here at Friendship Village, we have a guiding mission. I talked about that with our board as a reminder this week as well. And our mission statement here at Friendship Village says, Guided by biblical values that honor Jesus Christ, Friendship, Will Friendship Village works to provide a warm, gracious, secure environment that provides for the physical, spiritual, and emotional needs of our residents. That's why we do what we do. We honor God. We have an environment that is conducive to, to providing grace and care and kindness, and we look to meet those physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. And really, that's a, that's a mission, not just for the staff, but really all of us who live here at the village and take part. It's not a bad way to live one for, you know, just in life in general, looking out, loving God and caring for people. And so I reminded the board this week that as they plan and as they look to the future, let's hold fast to that mission 
And really, it's a reminder to all of us that we would live with that same mission, honoring God, loving him, loving others, even as we love ourselves. It was 10 years ago last month that I was on a mission, so to speak. I was a group uh, with um, seven fellow ministers from the greater Ohio area. There were two other uh, folks that joined us, Christian believers from China. And uh, we did um, several days touring in North Korea. That's right, I said North Korea, not South Korea. And we came there as tourists. They knew who we, who we were. We had to you know, fill out a history and our vocation and where we lived. And all that is setting up a travel visa into North Korea. We did it through an official tour agency. But we went with the hope of building relationships. You know, in North Korea, they are taught from the time they are very young that America is the enemy. And it was the heart of our uh, tour guide leader, a believer, that uh, to break down that stereotype and to demonstrate something different, to offer kindness and love as a way to demonstrate there is a God who's real, who loves everyone. And even uh, Americans considered to be the enemy can live a different kind of life, one that gives honor and praise and, and that which glorifies God and helps people. That was our hope. That was our intent. Of course, they North, North Koreans, they like tourists to come. It's one of the ways they receive money for their people. And, uh, and they were eager to show us the best of what they have. It's a very controlled environment. You have a North Korean tour guide that's assigned to you. There was, of course, the North Korean bus driver. There was a North Korean national security agent. His job was to watch us and to watch uh, the North Korean tour guides just to make sure everyone was doing the right thing in their eyes. And the challenge of going in, of trying to demonstrate the love and kindness of God, is that uh, Christianity is essentially outlawed in North Korea. They are a secular state. They really worship the great leader, now Kim Jong-un. He had just come to power. It had been less than six months in those days when we were there. And so our prayer going into that country was such that um, we knew we couldn't overtly, you know, share the gospel or those kind of things. But we asked the Lord, give us opportunity. Help us to make the most of the opportunities that come to show forth his goodness, his love. And as we journeyed those days through North Korea, we held on to that mission. There in the travel vehicle, this little extended van, we could share the scripture with each other. We would talk to each other about the Lord. We would sing songs of praise together. And, um, and then, of course, the North Korean agents that were with us, they were exposed to all of that. And um, they knew we were Christians. They knew that we were ministers. And so there was this expectation. Of course, we're going to share some of those truths with each other. It's part of who we are. And we try to make the most of those opportunities in a kind way, without being obnoxious, but just encouraging one another in the Lord, and especially while they were in our midst. Well, the short version of a much longer story today is that God surprised us with two extended opportunities to minister his goodness that we had not planned on. Um, there was a day that we were traveling in the mountains. And while we were there coming down the dirt road, our driver lost control of the vehicle and we crashed off to the left into the trees. And for the next six, seven hours, we were stranded there in the mountains of North Korea. Our driver was panicked. Our North Security Agency, uh, I, I'm sorry, our North Security, our, our North Korean security agent, he and one of the other um, North Korean tour guides, they had flown up into the window. There were impact points, shatter points where they hit their heads. They were uncomfortable. Um, everybody was unsure of what would happen next. And, uh, and we had a, a few people on our team that were slightly injured. And uh, we couldn't help it. We went into instant ministry mode. We were all ministers of the gospel. It was in our nature. We were suddenly praying for the sick, calling on the name of the Lord. We were praying for our bus driver. We were praying for our national security agent. We were praying for our tour guide, putting hands on their shoulders and calling out prayers in kind ways, just asking the Lord to bring peace and to bring calm. And they were amazed. They were amazed that we weren't mad or upset or screaming or despairing or any of that. There was a peace that settled over us. Villagers soon came from the mountainside and they fed us lunch there and uh, took care of us while we waited for a new bus to come. And 
what could have been an opportunity for disaster became an opportunity to demonstrate love and to demonstrate our faith in the Lord in a tangible way that ministered right to them. That very next day on a new bus with, new, with additional North Korean personnel with us, now a doctor, some nurses, some additional National Security Agency uh, personnel, and uh, a car, a black car full of people that traveled behind us. I don't even know who they all were, uh, but suddenly this larger entourage of um, personnel from North Korea traveled with us, now on this bigger bus. And then next day, as we were headed to our lunch site, we'd been down to see the seaside, and they had taken us to various spots um, to see in the morning. And as we traveled to our lunch site, we rounded a corner only to discover that coming the other way, hitting us in the side, was a large payloader construction vehicle that didn't see us and didn't break. And uh, that, that shovel on the front tore right into the back of the bus. The windows all exploded, and, uh, and we came to a full stop. And uh, now we had opportunity number two. And as we came off the bus, we realized that there were some of these new um, North, Secre- North Korean security people, they were injured. There was one, uh, one man from the National Office of Tourism. His arm was bleeding where the glass had come down and cut him. And I don't know what happened to the doctor and nurses that were traveling with us. They were suddenly absent. They were gone. They left the scene. They were pulled away. I don't know what happened to them. But we had our own first aid. We had backpacks of our own material. We began to bandage and care for those that were injured in this one particular national um, officer from the, from the National Office of Tourism. And our tour guide, our driver, they were more panicked than they were the day before. And there we were praying over them, calling for God to bring peace and bring his kingdom and show his goodness. But unlike the mountains, this was in a populated area. So hundreds and hundreds of North Koreans on bicycles were riding by. And just like you and I, as we would maybe see a wreck on the highway and we'd all stop and stare, here's this big wreck there. And as these, these uh, residents would come by on their bikes, they would all stop and stare. And so here we are, Americans, waving, smiling. They would call out to us, some of them, you know, it's trying to say hello, or, but they would call out in Russian. Um, this area of North Korea is very close to the Russian border, and some of them knew the Russian language, and they would call out, but we would answer in English and say hello and, and wave and just smile and be friendly. These people, most likely most of them, had never seen an American before. And there we were, praying, providing care, serving our North Korean um, personnel that were traveling with us, and doing it really without much thought. It was just instinctual. God helped us to make the most of those opportunities. Well, here's the bottom line of that story. As we were departing a few days later, our North Korean tour guide had tears in his eyes. He had written out a phonetic song, an ancient song of Korea that's about friendship and the sorrow of parting. And uh, he made sure he, he hand wrote a copy and gave it to each of us because we had come to mean so much to him. And uh, with tears in his eyes, we said goodbye. He, uh, he was deeply impacted. Six months later, I had friends on a very similar tour. And as they passed that same region where the first crash took place in the mountains, there was our van still stuck in those trees off the side of the road. And they had the same tour guide. And as they passed by that bus, the tour guide told them the story of a previous trip of American Christians who traveled with him that were involved in that crash but who responded with kindness and grace and great care. And his eyes welled up with tears, telling the story, saying he would never be the same again after that visit. He was so touched by the folks that showed love and kindness on that day. Here's the point. God calls us to make the most of every opportunity, and opportunities abound every day for us to respond to other people who are in hardship or fear or obstacles or disappointment, who need comfort or a friend, we can offer love. We can show forth the goodness of God. We can offer smiling faces and um, and just our presence of being close to someone who's in need. And as we do, the goodness of God comes through and his love, his joy, his peace suddenly makes itself known 
and becomes all the difference for people in these evil days. So let's follow after the heart of Scripture. Let's hold fast to the mission that God has given each of us. That was my encouragement to our our board this week. It is my encouragement to all of us. Let's live and embrace the mission that God has and let his goodness abound as we make the most of every opportunity. And with that thought, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the chance to reach out to you in prayer. Jesus, we thank you so much for your great love for us, for how you offered your life, that we could live transformed, that we could be brought out of darkness and into light, that we could be the recipients of eternal life and walk in divine relationship with you. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for pouring out your presence into all that believe, helping us to make the most of every opportunity that you give us to show forth the goodness of God. May we embrace that call and that mission and love people even as you love us. Lord, I thank you that you're helping us to love you with all our heart, soul, and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Continue that in us, Lord. May we make the most of the opportunities you bring us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that these thoughts encourage your heart and offer you some strength as well. Here at Friendship Village, we show these videos every day, Monday through Friday. They're brand new at 4.30. They're repeated 8 o'clock at night, and then once again, 8 o'clock the following morning. We store them, however, on YouTube. That's where our system grabs them in order to put them out on the broadcast. And uh, if you're on YouTube, you can watch these videos anytime you like, day or night, and as many as you want. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell. You'll see all our videos there right now. If uh, you know someone that could use some encouragement and you're watching this online, consider sending them the link that they might be encouraged as well. You can also click on my face on your computer or tablet or phone, however it is that you're viewing this today, and uh, subscribe to these videos when they're brand new, or to click on this box below to see any in our past history. God bless you today. Let's embrace the mission God has for us. We'll see you next time.